The answer to the question, how to make money selling my beats, how to sell my beats is don't. Don't. And I know the rebuttal is going to be, look at this guy. Look at this guy. What's dude's name? Pain? Pain something? Shout out to you. I watched some of your videos, but you are one of the very few, bro. No, I'm not. So I'm going to say something that's difficult to say, but it's truthful. Not just with me. I've talked to a lot of producers about this. Beat sales, online beat sales are down. Now, this is 2023, February, that I'm saying this. This is post-COVID, even though people are still dying from it. It's also post-holidays. There's a lot of economic uncertainty. All I'm saying is there are a lot of factors contributing to why beat sales are down. I don't have the answers. Does that mean beat selling is dead? No. People that made six figures last year off of selling beats are going to make six figures this year. The people that made five figures last year off of selling beats are going to make five figures this year. But I wanted to have a real conversation with you before we get into the, the bullshit. Because periodically, and by periodically I mean every freaking day, someone is making the assertion that selling beats online is dead and that um, having a beat store is not even worthwhile especially not now in 2023 every year they say 2022 it's not worth it in 2021 blah, blah blah they've been saying that since i don't know 2015 probably i happened upon a video i don't know why this video was recommended to me but it had a really we'll say captivating title how to not sell beats in 2023 pure game on not selling beats and still going huge. Grammatically odd, but also compelling, right? And, and controversial. I start watching it, again, I don't know why YouTube recommended it to me, because the, the, the guy has only 50 subscribers, but it tells you that maybe YouTube is recommending what they feel are relevant videos from new channels. I think that's something that the YouTube al tube algorithm does do. But as I'm watching it, I hear my name. So this is my first, I think this is my first response video. Cause the man said my name, you shouldn't have done that. Here we go. I don't, he keeps referring to the studio in the video. I watched it kind of briefly, but look at, I think it's a green screen. I don't know, like, doesn't it look like this is superimposed onto a background? Selling beats. I think, I think the, the real, real question you're asking is, how do I zoom out of this fed up dead end road I got myself into? How do I back up and what do I look at? Already he's saying some pretty controversial stuff. Selling beats is a dead end road and that's gonna be a recurring theme throughout the video. Welcome to my billion dollar studio. My name is Norbs. Today it's a he's being sarcastic, right? We're talking about something I found in the keyword research tool on YouTube that says there's a content to get. Ding, make a video about that. You might get some views. I know how to talk about this a little bit because I've been going down this music production, selling my beats thing for 20 some odd years. Okay, so over 20 years, he's been selling beats. Bookmark that, put a pin in that. And guess what? I did sell a couple, but I'm so happy. A couple in 20 years. Maybe that's just humility. Happy that it's not where my success comes from because I think it's an insanely hard thing to do. Might be. It's not easy. Shout out to anyone that's actually selling beats and doing six figures, life changing money. Thank you. There's only a select few and maybe a handful of people that are doing it. Nah, there are like hundreds of us doing it that way. And those five, 10, 20, whatever, inspire. Try not to say anything. I don't like when people try to quantify things that they have no actual data on. That's all I'm going to say. Hundreds of thousands of others to go out there and chase this beat making bag. I think it's an absolutely horrible idea for all kinds of reasons, but let's start with the very first. Try to zoom out of everything you just learned and did in this beat making music production world rabbit hole you've gone down. You're so deep down there. Zoom out of it. Come back out of the rabbit hole and then zoom back out up above that rabbit hole and look down at what did you just do from a business perspective. You have chosen to develop a product to try to sell it to the most broken and broken demographic in the world. That sounds racist, man. I'm not going to lie. Rappers, I did it too. You have chosen to create low ticket product. You have chosen to try to sell stuff for $5. This guy's selling it for $4.95. I should sell mine for $3.95. Yeah. He's, he's just going right in into some sort of rabbit hole. I don't, I don't know where it's coming from, but I'm entertained so far. No, you shouldn't. This guy's selling. I agree. You shouldn't sell beats for... $3.99. Yeah, for $200 an exclusive. Hmm, if I could only move an exclusive a day every day for the whole year, not gonna happen. It, it could. It probably won't, but it could. Maybe you sell a couple a week 
and then you lease in the meantime and supplement it with other money and you're making a pretty good living. I don't know what the problem with that is. Product is these beats. These beats are bought by and listened to by a lot more than rappers. Your beats have so much more value to them than you realize. And half of you probably don't know, you probably get more money out of your beats streaming them than you will trying to sell it to artists. Shopping beats to artists is an insanely hard thing to do. Or better yet, I'm gonna make a bunch of beats, partner with my local rappers in the city, and the rappers will take me up with them, yeah! I actually have a problem with people who encourage that as, so I'm on the same page with him, at least on this point. Horrible business plan. Again, you're making product, we're all making product, and everyone's competing for this tiny little silver lining up top of the elite of the industry. That what, what I have a problem with with this video so far is that he is naming single income streams and saying, don't do that. And then naming another single income stream and saying, don't do that. When in reality, no one is forcing anybody to choose multiple income streams is a thing. It's kind of cliche at this point, honestly. Pay good money, 10,000, 20,000, 150,000 for a beat or for a placement or for you to work on the project with them. And then there's the rest, the 99 point something percent that are lost. So for me to actually answer your question, how to sell beats, how to sell my beats. Okay, good. We're going to get into specifics. He's going to talk about how to sell beats. Great. I think this is what people need. They want value. They want specificity. How to get more on BeatStars, Air, all of them. I don't have the answer for you because... The God damn it. The answer is in the question. How to sell my beats. Sell my beats. My beats. Beats. Selling beats. This sounds like a spoken word poetry piece. Is insanely hard. And you might get demotivated and discouraged thinking my beats just don't bang. No, you're probably just not a marketer. A marketer with crappy beats will go so much farther than a top talent that just wants to create and doesn't want to focus on this other stuff and we're forced to. We're forced to wear so many hats. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to go into business for ourselves, then we have to become business people. It's weird, right? Out of necessity comes creativity. So my small independent- Spoiler alert, this guy's gonna mention a whole bunch of other alternatives to make money that all involve understanding business. <laughs> I don't understand the point of him setting the premise that selling beats is too hard and it involves too much marketing knowledge only to provide a solution that involves a lot of really hard work that involves, I think, equally difficult to achieve amounts of knowledge. And a team of producers and I have found ways to monetize in very big ways without having to focus on that demographic of people. Any artist is typically operating out of starving artist mode still, not abundance. We're aiming for the guys that have abundance and want to give us a lot of money and say, come work on my project. So I changed my goal. Maybe this is part of the answer for you. I changed my goal. I took my whole catalog down from all the beat selling sites. Let me flip. Well, he's, he did say he only sold a couple. It's you in a different way. You're running a business selling low ticket items to a hard to reach and monetize demographic to begin with. You're better off creating shirts because everybody needs shirts. I have nothing to say about that. Leave a comment. You get me? It's a really hard thing we do. Competing for all that stuff too. There's actual YouTube tutorials on how to start a tight beats channel. Why would you want to do that? Things I might do if I was in your shoes. Get off all the BeatStars types of sites. You know why? It's not just the site. It's as soon as you say, I want to sell on BeatStars or any of these sites, it's here's a rabbit hole. You don't know what awaits you down there. You're gonna be upgrading, updating, buying ads, buying space, marketing, getting new social media accounts paying for ads on those accounts, you're going down such a different rabbit hole than you started this as, which is just like, let me make the product, man. Let me be the best manufacturer I can be and maybe partner with someone that knows what to do with this product instead of- Not gonna happen. Of let me make the product and let me become a genius marketer that's competing with hundreds of thousands of other wannabe genius marketers that are still in beat production selling for five, 10, 15, 20 bucks a beat. Man, the answer to the question, how to make money selling my beats, how to sell my beats is don't. Don't. Maybe some of you guys can school me. Maybe everybody's making millions off of beats and this is like a, a false flag. YouTube isn't actually... Why did you make the video then if you're not sure? Giving me a heads up on the keywords that are going to do well. well. Hold on. I know goddamn well YouTube didn't send you a personalized email saying, hey, make a video telling people not to sell beats even if you're not sure if that's the greatest advice to give them. 
I don't know if you guys have ever tried to put a price on your whole catalog. I don't know if you've ever researched selling a catalog if it's established and has numbers behind it, right? So let's choose a number. Everything makes me a million dollars a year. For the past few years, the big OG acts are selling off their catalogs because they don't want to leave their families with this mess. After. So I think what he's saying is all you guys who are making beats, stop selling them online and simply become Justin Bieber and then sell your catalog for several hundred million. Easy. <sighs> Why didn't I think of that? I'm close to and have played with trying to sell the catalog. My whole group, there's about eight of us. All of us have different sized catalogs. All of us do. I'm sorry. I don't know what he's talking about here. I'm just going to skip. Pain? Pain? Pain something? Shout oh, look out at to that. you. Look at that. Look at that. There's, there's my uh, claim to fame. <laughs> Why are you selling beats? My question back to you is, why are you trying to sell beats to a hard, the hardest demographic to sell to, starving artists? And I know the rebuttal is gonna be, look at this guy, look at this guy. What's dude's name? Pain? Pain something? Shout out to you, I watched some of your videos, but you are one of very few, bro. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> I started late in the game. I started so late. I, I didn't start making actual bill paying money off of selling beats online until maybe 2018. So I'm like third generation. Before me, there was a whole full two generations full of producers that made a lot more money than I did. That's all I'm gonna say. And a lot of kids out there have been fooled into thinking I could be just like this pain dude, just make- So that's kind of insulting. The implication is that we're fooling people by telling our story a bunch of beats and upload them. No, man, he's got a very specific, unique story. Found himself on a path that put him in a position of leadership to be able to sell so much, so quick over. So much, so quick, I disagree. But what do I know? It's just, it's my life. He did it right. Not many do though. And following three or four success stories out of 100,000, the ratio is The ratio of success on selling beats is crazy. That's also why when somebody big- That's kind of true. Comes out with, I made all this money on BeatStars, People salivate over the video and they go in and they watch it. Only they do. Need to discover there's nothing there. There's no, they didn't help me. How do I? Okay, bookmark that. There's nothing there. Because he's about to blow us out of the water with specificity. He's going to give us actionable steps to actually make money in ways that don't entail having a beat store, right? He has to because he just set himself up. How about be somebody first, come to BeatStars with a huge following already, and you're going to be chopping beats left, right, and center. Okay, so another really good piece of advice. So far, one, be Justin Bieber, sell your catalog for millions of dollars. Or two, become an incredibly famous person and then start selling beats online. Got it. Maybe build up your YouTube and other social media platforms, whatever you're good at. Build those up. Get to 50,000, 100,000 people. You just got done saying it's hard to sell beats because you have to become a, 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 a high-level marketer. And now you're saying just become a high-level marketer and then you'll be able to sell beats. You hear yourself, right? I'm selling beats. The first 10 are cheap. Go get them. Get some traction that way. Instead of, I'm a beat maker. I have to learn marketing. Okay, let me start. I'm a nobody. How do I market? Okay, buy some ads. Eh. Okay, I sold four beats. I made $94 this month. If this channel gets to 100,000 people, I will be able to easily sell anything to them. You'd be surprised, but I, I do respect your confidence. I wish I had that level of confidence, honestly. It was also sample packs. That even was a lot easier because Again, the demographic of people. Now I'm not focusing on starving artists. I'm selling to producers who are also usually still not way up there, but they're farther. They got enough going on and they figured out enough to have a studio, to have discipline every day, banging away at beats, getting the reps up every day. At least that person I know has some money and I can sell them some software. A lot easier than the $14.99 beat package. Let me find out I'm selling my beautiful talent for $5 ten dollars twenty thirty dollars a pop how much are you selling your sample packs for i'm just again grateful that i don't have to do it i'm sorry if this comes off like a, if i come off like a total asshole right now because you sell beats you've been trying you've been at it for two years and i just discouraged the shit out of you sometimes that's what we need we need to be shown bro you're at a dead end road you're at a dead end road there's okay so let me stop him right there just because you're discouraging people doesn't mean that you're helping them. What information are you presenting to people 
so that you're not simply discouraging them, but that you're actually providing some sort of value to enrich their lives rather than just discourage them from pursuing what they've always wanted to pursue. I'm gonna continue watching, but I wanna provide some value quickly and provide some encouragement because it's, it's on me to give a coherent and data-based rebuttal to what this gentleman is saying, which to me so far has been, in my opinion, chaotic, disorganized, and not at all based on any sort of concrete facts. He hasn't provided statistics. He hasn't provided case studies other than I did this, I did that. I'm really good at it. Don't do it. What he said so far is don't sell beats. It's a losing battle. If that were the case, the data should reflect it. So I'm just searching Google Trends right now. The Google Trend for the type beat search term because that's as general as I could get if I if I did like Drake type beat. Well, I could go back five years. Maybe we can do that in a second. But just the, the, the search term type beats, right? These are people searching for beats. This is your customer base. They should be a shrinking demographic based on the assertion this, this guy's making in his videos. And in fact, since 2018, it has actually trended upwards. I don't know what happened here and I don't know what happened here. But this should be encouraging that not only is there a general upward trend, but there was also a recent spike at the end of last year. Beats for sale, right? Because according to him, rappers are broken, whatever that means, and also unwilling to purchase beats. It seems like a pretty flat trend with ups and downs as you can expect. And there was a pretty high peak in February of 2019 and then another one at the beginning of 2018. And then, you know, I don't know what happened here, COVID, whatever. And now suddenly you see another rise and this is current. So it looks like things are encouraging. Now, if we search the YouTube search trends, type beats also appear to be currently on an upward trend and not on a general downward trend. So since February, 2018, there was a, a, a rise in, in, in 2019 and a dip in 2021 and then now a rise in, in 2022. But even this dip in 2021 was not anywhere as low as it was in 2018. So again, this should be encouraging stuff and this is data driven. These are search terms. You would have to ask people about actual sales data. That's those data are impossible to ascertain, so I would never speak on them. Um, let's see what else this guy is willing to speak on without actual data. And you know what's crazy? There's thousands of y'all standing around looking at each other like, what do we do? And what's crazier is there's more and more of them coming up behind you. Holy crap, look at all those people. Y'all are trying to do the same thing I'm doing. Record nature sounds. We go outside, record ourselves walking through leaves and put ambiance, light chords over. I don't know. See, this is where he just starts rambling. Anyone listening to anything I create right now, therefore, what should I create? What's the most lucrative thing to create? I'll tell you now, it's not hip hop beats because of saturation and the hundreds of thousands of people beside you on that dead end road, all looking for a come up. Here's another bit of game. This is going back like 10. I'll never forget it. As soon as I saw it, Snoop Dogg interview, he's holding a CD or something and he's like, I'm going to paraphrase it because I don't remember exactly the words that were used by them. He's holding a CD and he's like, this producer just tried to sell me these beats. And I'm telling him no. And he's like, how do I get put on then? Like, how do I get my beat? How, what, what would make you say yes? And he goes, bro, I'm Snoop. You give me these beats for free. I'm gonna go and do what I do with them. I'm gonna make millions. You're not gonna get a penny. But I'm gonna tell everybody, you charged me 200K and I happily paid it. You were trying to charge me three, I gave you two. I need to see that interview because if that's the case, I certainly disagree with what Snoop's saying. Now you can go and sell your next beats to anybody for whatever you want. I'll call. That's not even true, but whatever. Post sign you if you give it to me for free. Approach it that way. So that's that's actually terrible advice. Take from that maybe, and I bet you blow up a lot faster working with a hundred vocal artists. Okay, so so far. The three things you can do that are easy alternatives to selling beats. One, be Justin Bieber. Two, become a Instagram celebrity. And three, meet Snoop Dogg. Sending all of them your beats and saying, free, I just want the credits. Free, I just want a network. Free, I just want a path. And be willing to have them stolen, fucked with. It's a loss leader. Didn't this guy start the video off by saying not to do this? 
You're doing something nice in advance, knowing they're going to mess with me. This guy's going to screw me. This guy's going to steal it. But you own it. If anybody steals your stuff and it blows up, I hope for it. I'm going to. What's the difference between this and uploading beats to YouTube with a link to your beat star? People steal those all, all the time. Do a future video on someone that did and I'm, I came close to taking them the legal route, but it didn't blow up big enough. Let's create audio and find as many outreach platforms and formats and mediums and niches and genres and people and people types and movies and everybody that requires audio and focus on the end users the listeners there's a huge market for people that love to listen to beats that are not vocals on it there's a huge demographic of people that are out there that like to listen to just ambiance as background stuff as meditation i know i for one have made plenty of videos showcasing producers who simultaneously sell beats online and upload their beats directly to the DSPs and monetize that. That's something that has been long established. I, I, what he's describing is releasing instrumental albums and producers. I, I would say, I would bet money that the majority of producers out there are aware that there are many opportunities for simply releasing instrumentals as well as selling them. Again, it's, it's not hard to take the same beats that you upload to your beat store and distribute them to the platform. You know what's crazy? This is gonna be insulting for a lot of people. I have brown noise albums that get hundreds of thousands of streams. I have brown noise albums where the last report was 750,000 streams. I will show you guys in future videos. I will, I'm proud of this stuff. Yeah, show us, cause I'm starting to become skeptical about everything you're saying. Cause it shows that sometimes just thinking about something different. And realistically, even 750,000 streams doesn't really amount to that much money yeah you know if you do that consistently then yeah you're making a few thousand dollars but not e not enough to to pay your bills for a year would make you way more money than going through like i'm gonna make 500 beats from scratch in a month and then i'm gonna this huge grandiose idea that is hard to execute harder to finish just thinking about it a little bit differently you're not just a beat maker you're an audio engineer. You manipulate sound. You know how to make probably every genre. You just got to learn how to mimic it properly first. Maybe get a sound kit or two to reverse it. Okay, that's how they do the... And you're in. You're in. You're in. How to sell my beats should really be, how do I monetize my talents? How do I rewind myself back to before I started to get in on this focused path and then get reassured by that path being the right path by a whole bunch of other people that have no fucking clue what they're doing with one or two success stories. I know you're not talking about me. I know you're not talking about me. Something else you can do. Something I would do right off the hop. I got these. I got who, who needs this? The games. Oh, games. Yeah. Let me email every gaming developer. Emailing every game developer. Okay. That's, that's the fourth bit of actionable practical advice. Let me, let me go visit this gaming studio down the street. Let me take these stems and say, maybe I could just sell this stem as an intro to something. And Vado's audio jungle. Somewhere else you can easily be selling beats to people way outside the niche. Video creators need background beats and stuff. As say the pricing structure for Envato. Say it. As well. And they often have money, right? I kind of have a hard time being in front of this camera. I have Clearly not, bro, because this is a 34-minute video. My elements of being introverted, too. But you have to be extroverted enough to be able to say, I know this shit's not going to just fall on my lap. I know I can't just make 100 beats and just wait. I, I had to stop watching the video. I, I don't know that anything else comes up that I wanted to talk about. And I had to take some time to collect my thoughts. So here I go. Number one. He said himself that he made this video because YouTube told him there was a content gap, which means there was a search term that he could exploit for his own channel. That doesn't mean he's qualified to speak on this topic. It just means that YouTube said, hey, you could make a video about this and potentially get a lot of views. I don't believe he's a part of the beat selling community. He pretty much said he wasn't because he doesn't sell beats online and, and discourages people from even doing that. So no, he's certainly not a, a part of this community. And he made a lot of objectively false statements. For example, there are more than five, 10, 20 producers making six figures, and there are way more making five figures on the high end. Number two, he said at least once, but I think more than once, that he was being discouraging, but maybe that was a good thing because that's what producers needed. They needed to be discouraged. We don't need to be discouraged. The music business is discouraging enough. We need practical 
and specific help from experienced individuals. He listed some alternatives, but they were vague. For example, become famous on social media and then sign up to Beat Stars, even though he said that, you know, Beat Stars was, was a dead end. Doesn't make sense. I have videos on how to grow your social media. He talked about how to get placements in, in video games. I have videos that literally say how to get your beats placed in TV and film and video games. They're all the same kind of license. It's a sync license. He said instead of trying to sell beats, put your, your beats on the, the streaming platforms. I have a lot of, I have interviews with Tantoo Beats, Tundra Beats, Eldre, explaining exactly how to do that in practical terms. You know, we're, we talk about playlisting, how to direct traffic from social media to Spotify, how to plan your releases uh, to give the DSPs enough time for a favorable rollout. These are specifics. I didn't hear the guy talk specifics at all. I mean, he literally suggested emailing every game developer online, which is just impractical, not to mention impossible. And it just doesn't sound like the kind of advice that comes from a person with 20 plus years experience in the music business. Number three, selling beats is hard work. I have never said otherwise. I would never say it's easy. That I agree with in his video. It's hard. It's not as hard as he says it is. It's not a dead end. And your customer base aren't a bunch of broken people. And just because something is hard, don't be discouraging. I mean, if he had said it, it was challenging, that'd be one thing. He said it was a dead end working with broken people, which was, I think, offensive, not to mention false. So instead of being discouraged, be strategic. You know, And looking at the Google trends, it seems as though the interest in buying beats isn't going down. It, it actually suggests that it might be increasing. And you know, even my own channel seems to be on an upward trend lately, but I'm just showing you the raw stats because I don't want to be a hypocrite and sit here and, and talk about how he's not giving specifics and then I don't give specifics. And then number four, lastly, if you want to make content for the producer community, this is kind of my advice to him and people like him, do it from a place of experience, love and authenticity. This guy could have shown specific strategies for uploading beats to DSPs or shared stories with details about how his team of producers leverage their catalog to make money hand over fist in these big catalog buyouts. He could have interviewed someone with more experience and asked them specific questions and shared their story, but he didn't. And I think that's unfortunate. So to conclude, stay encouraged. Don't be discouraged. Just educate yourself and put what you learn into action. Don't limit yourself to one income stream. I would never say that. Try them all. See what works for you. See what feels authentic for you. Don't just do it because it's going to make money. If you're selling beats online and you love making samples and you can make original samples, hey, try out selling a sample pack. See how that goes for you. If that works, great. If uploading your beats to Spotify works for you and you enjoy it, great. If it doesn't work, if you try it for months and months and it doesn't work, don't adopt it. But if it does work, adopt it. And the more actions you take and the more things you try, the closer you become, the closer you come to building a strong overall revenue model for yourself. There are people constantly, I mean, since before I was even selling beats online that were making statements like this guy that selling beats was a dead end. Selling beats online is dead. Don't start a beat store. All that is dead, blah, blah, blah. If I had listened my life would be very different in a bad way right now. And I'm glad I didn't listen. And I hope you don't listen either. Much success to you. Appreciate you watching. Peace.